Hello everyone, in today's video I will explain you how to perform an Eigen frequency or Eigen mode analysis of a beam with fixed constraints on both sides. So the beam is constrained over here and over here and what you can see over here is one of the Eigen modes and this is the Eigen frequency. Furthermore, I will teach you how to generate these nice animations that you can see over here and over here. The first one shows the higher order Eigen mode, how it oscillates, and the lower animation shows also one of the Eigen modes, however, however, at the lower frequency. In order to keep this video as short as possible, I decided not to give you a theoretical introduction to Eigen frequency and Eigen mode analysis. Instead, I suggest you to read this post created by someone working at Comsol Multiphysics. This post uh, gives you a very nice introduction to Eigen mode and Eigen frequency analysis. Although this post uh, doesn't explain how to compute Eigen frequencies and Eigen modes in Comsol Multiphysics, it still gives you a starting point for further investigations. For example, uh, you can see over here how the Eigen modes uh, look like for, let's say, simple mass and spring system. For example, if you have two masses uh, connected together by a spring and a damper, you obtain uh, these are the Eigen modes. And uh, there is another example also that shows you how the Eigen modes of a simple beam look like. This is something very similar that we will, that we will explain in this video, however, we are considering a three-dimensional case, however, the results are very similar and there is even a theoretical formula that can predict you Eigen frequencies and Eigen modes and also you have, a, you have a similar analysis and similar derivations and equivalent equation for the cantilever beam. So let's start from scratch. We click on Model Wizard, we click on 3D then uh, we select solid mechanics or you can go from structural mechanics and you can select solid mechanics you click on add good then you click on study and here you have several options since we are looking into Eigen frequency and Eigen mode analysis we are going to click on Eigen frequency uh, frequency domain is something else and uh, there are also other types of studies such as modal, Eigen frequency, modal, uh, frequency domain, we are not going to choose these studies, so we click on Eigen frequency study and we click on done. Okay, so the first step is to define the geometry of the problem. So how to define a geometry? Super easy, we do the right click on geometry and we click on cylinder. You can also uh, choose, uh, for example, another option such as uh, cone, block, sphere, however we are going to click on cylinder and the radius will be 0 0.02, so 2 centimeters and basically the length or the height will be basically 2 meters and here we are going to specify the axis, in our case the main axis of the cylinder will be the x-axis and you click on build select great so this is our beam okay so the next step is to define the constraints you're going to assume that this side and this side over here are fixed how to do that well we click on solid mechanics and here we have several options right we can click on fixed constraint and by clicking on fixed constraint we can uh, obtain this menu boundary selection and we can simply select this boundary and the boundary over here great now we have achieved or we have actually constrained our system okay so the next step is to choose the material we are going to choose the material from the library so we click on material we click on add material from the library and here you can select materials so I'm going to choose one of the recent uh, materials I used, I used aluminum I do a double click 
good. Now we have aluminum, right? As our material, you can choose steel, aluminum, any type of material. You can also define material, material by yourself. Okay, so the next step is to match the geometry. So let's first click on default setting and we clicked on build all. Let's see the geometry. Well, I don't like this geometry. It kind of turns our cylinder into prismatic object, so I don't like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to increase the mesh size. Okay, this looks better. So I'm going to choose a finer mesh. And also, of course, you can play here with mesh, you can play with mesh parameters, you can manually mesh everything. And uh, basically, that's all. So the first step, geometry. The second step is to define the material. Actually, the second step is to define the constraints, right? Fixed constraints. You have these two sides. The third step is the material. And the fourth step is the match. Okay, and the next step, and the final step, is basically uh, to define our study properties. Uh, here, we are not going to play with the eigenfrequency solver. Uh, we are going to only change the desired number of eigenfrequencies. So we are going to click here, let's say on 12. Units will be hertz. And here you can specify search for eigenfrequencies around first hertz or one hertz. Well, this is not necessary since uh, basically Comsol Multiphysics will compute you basically 12 eigen modes and eigen frequency for the first 12 eigen frequencies. Okay, that would be all and we click on compute. And let's see what happens, how long it, it will take. I have a computer with 16 gigabyte of RAM. Great, so here are the results. You uh, can automatically or console automatically generates uh, several graphs so this is the uh, graph showing the mode shape. So this is probably one of the first modes. You can select the modes over here. This is probably the second one. This is the third mode. This is the fourth one. This is the fifth one, etc. You also have sixth one and seventh one, etc. This study is not realistic for at least one reason. In reality, we have damping. However, I didn't introduce material uh, damping, so I'm going to introduce right now material damping. So the easiest way to introduce the material damping is to click on the linear elastic material and to click on damping. And here you can select different type of dampings. You can have Rayleigh damping, viscous damping, as anisotropic loss factor and isotropic loss, uh, loss factor. So I'm going to click on Rayleigh damping and I'm going to specify uh, these parameters. Alpha and beta, for example, I'm going to assume for alpha, let's say, 5 and for beta, a small, a small number. And let's see what happens. Let me choose a smaller number and let's repeat our study. Okay, let's look at the eigen frequencies and the eigen modes. Now, what happens over here? The eigen frequency or the eigen frequencies start to have an imaginary component. This is a direct consequence of the fact that we have introduced damping in the system. So, whenever you have a damping, eigen frequency will have an imaginary component. Okay, and the final thing that I want to show you is how to generate animation. So if you click on results and if you click here on animation, you can click on player and then you'll have this menu over here. Now, here you can select a different option. So one of the options that I'm going to select is to select mode shape. Target is going to be player and you can also play um, with the other parameters, um, then you can select result parameter, global parameter, dynamic data extension, store solution, and streamline. So I'm going to select here dynamic data extension. 
So, and let's see what happens. Uh, so if I click uh, the right click and if I click on play, let's see what happens. I'm obtaining this animation over here. Okay, now this animation is linked with this graph over here. So by changing, for example, the Eigen frequency, let's say, let's choose this Eigen frequency. Let's plot it and click here animation and we can play the animation over here okay so in this way we can change the mode that we want to animate and finally I will explain you how to export this animation to a file but first what I like to do is basically to uh, make my animation to repeat itself so if I click uh, on repeat I can select the number of iterations that I can, and I can select here six. You can also, of course, uh, play with the number of frames, uh, with the frame number, etc. Now, uh, over here, you can select the target, and the target will be a file. And uh, here, you can select an option movie, image sequence, and the format you can select GIF or some other uh, form or format. And if you click on browse, we are going to basically here select the file name and I'm going to call this file mode3.gif and I click on save. And I simply click on export and console should be able to obtain and save the animation. Here it is, it's mode3.gif and here is your GIF file, you can include it in your presentation, in your web, web page, etc. Okay, so that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you find these videos useful, please subscribe or support my channel. Thank you and have a nice day.